and welcome to our 19th Holding Space for Self and Others webinars. It is really lovely to have all of you here from around the country in Australia and around the globe. So thanks for joining us nationally and internationally. My name is Jackie Short. I'm the Director of Sydney Centre for Creative Change. And I'm really excited to be hosting this last free webinar that we have for the year, Holding Space for Self and Others number 19, 2020, what a year it was and what a year it has been for all of us. We have an exciting panel for you today of four mental health professionals from around Australia and internationally who have all been challenged by this year, like we all have, and all at really different stages of their professional journey, from some people just starting out in the mental health professional professions to some people who have been working in the field for quite a period of time. So we're really excited to welcome each of those presenters on our panel today, <clears throat> and also to give you a chance to reflect in some small breakout rooms today about how your year has been. So what's going to happen, I'm going to share some slides with you in a moment. We're going to invite and hear from each of our panelists for around 10 minutes. Then we're going to give you an opportunity to ask questions if you have any for any of those panelists and then to be in breakout rooms with two or three others for about five minutes to share your reflections and experiences from the year as well. Then we're going to have some prize giveaways and I'll talk about some of the other free things that we've got coming up at uh, early next year for you. So really great to have you here. Before we start officially, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands that I come to you from today, the Eora people of the Gadigal Nation and pay our collective respects to elders past, present and emerging. So welcome <clears throat> one and all. This is our 19th holding space and we're going to be reflecting, our panelists are going to be reflecting on what their learnings and reflections have been this year and what the opportunities have been in amongst some of the challenge and chaos that we've all experienced. Then we'll have some chance to connect in and have a prize giveaway. So I'd like to um, acknowledge our first speaker who's going to be coming to us shortly. Aidan Ellie is new to the field of behaviour therapy and is based on the Central Coast in New South Wales. He re recently graduated from psychology at Macquarie University and his work currently is focused on children with ASD, combining principles of applied behavioural analysis and play therapy that I know he has a passion for. He's got a keen interest in creativity and mindfulness and hopes to utilise these in his career in psychology. So we're going to welcome Aidan as our first panellist momentarily. Our second panellist is Emily Curley. Emily is a child and family counsellor based in Coffs Harbour, New South Wales, in regional New South Wales. She works both in the community service sector and in private practice. She's trained in and combines play therapy, attachment focus interventions, and narrative therapy in her counselling work. She's got an interest in working with and advocating for children who've been impacted by childhood trauma. She's going to be sharing her reflections shortly. Our third presenter is on our training team here at Sydney Centre for Creative Change. Kim is a registered supervisor and counsellor and member of the ACA College of Supervisors. Passionate about training and supervision, Kim is committed to passing forward her ever-evolving counselling skills and knowledge. And she loves attending training as much as delivering it. She's a very dynamic presenter. She's been facilitating workshops and groups for over 25 years and has been training with us for six years now. She started her working life as a teacher and used storytelling very actively in her work with children. She's got master's degrees in both counselling and narrative therapy. And I know you'll be impressed by um, Kim's presentation also today. And the last of our panellists is Dr. Robert Grant, who's very kindly coming in, joining us from Missouri in the US. Robert is a licensed professional counsellor, national certified counsellor, a registered play therapist supervisor, and advanced certified autism specialist. He has developed a method of alt, alt play therapy, which combines a range of different approaches, therapeutically and methodologically, to best support children on the ASD, on the autism disorder spectrum, from highly impaired to high functioning children. And he's going to be sharing some of his challenges this year, as well as opportunities. So without further ado, I'd like to uh, welcome our panelists and have Aidan do our first presentation for us. So welcome, Aidan. Hi, Jackie, and thank you everyone for joining us today and for everyone that's 
joined us throughout the year on these series of videos. It's been great to be a part of. So um, I'm just at the start of my career. I graduated halfway through this year. And um, yeah, it's been a very interesting one for me. A lot of challenges, a lot of changes all at once. Um, I'm currently working in ABA field, uh, working with children on the spectrum mostly. I've been working in it for a couple of months. Um, and it's the first job I've had so far that's applied what I've learned at university, which has been a real privilege for me. Um, I'd like to begin with my last semester at university. Um, so when I started, that's when COVID started coming into New South Wales and we had all the lockdown and restrictions. And um, that caused a lot of, you know, doubt and problems for me. Uh, I was just more worried about the work I had, I was working in retail and it just started working for Jackie. I was worried about losing those jobs. I was worried about what would happen to the job market when I left university. Um, and also just having to do everything, all my study at home. Uh, I, I, fr from a lot of friends, what a lot of friends told me is that it was very helpful for them to be just working in the one space. But for me, it was really bad for motivation. So I struggled a lot with that. But um. <clears throat> The good news was that I kept working for Jackie. Um, she could keep me on, which was nice. Um, and I got to be a part of these holding space videos, which were really fantastic and really innovative. Um, it really showed how when things change, people can really come together and through resilience and innovation and kind of make things work under bad circumstances. Um, I think it was even for the best that we had these lockdowns when working in this admin job, it meant I got to get a lot more involved than I would have been normally. Um, I got to attend a lot of training. I got to meet a lot more people that I would have normally have met uh, through this community that we've created online. And I think that's been really good for my career and for thinking about what direction I wanted to go into. I got to meet a lot of different people from a lot of different backgrounds and a lot of different trainings. Um, so that, those are some good things that have come out of COVID. <laughs> um, so when I left university, uh, it was a pretty scary time for me. Um, I was worried about after all this study and after all this money, would I be able to actually work in something that I'm interested in? And I got very lucky, um, mainly through my friendships at university. They were probably one of the most important resources I had. Um, I learned about the ABA field through them and I got to do, yeah, I got to learn about the ABA field. I wouldn't have known about it if I didn't know these people. Um, I remember asking my friend when I was going for it, uh, what advice she would have. And the only thing she said was lots of self care. And that kind of worried me a bit at first. Cause I was like, well, what am I getting myself into? Um, I've only been working in it for a couple of months, but um, yeah, I was surprised by how draining it is. Uh, the work is, you're mostly just working one-on-one -on -one with a child for about usually three hours per session and you just run through all these programs. Um, and you have to deal with a lot of problem behaviors and you have to keep the child motivated. And sometimes they're very dissociated from other people. Um, they have problem behaviors like tantrums. Um, and that was very confronting at first. Um, but through my colleagues and my friends and talking to people about their experiences and their challenges. I've just discovered that it's, it's difficult work. And this is a population that's, uh, that have challenges and that's why they're seeing us in the first place. So I've learned to accept that a lot more. Um, I've also learned working through in the psychology field is that the level of trust and kind of almost power we have when people come to see us, they, they, they place a lot of trust in our expertise and our training and our backgrounds. And I was surprised by that and also kind of flattered and it, it's very motivating. It makes me want to do the best job I can possibly do. Um, other things that have come out through this year, well, like with the admin work, I've been able to present. Um, I presented at the expo uh, last week, which was a really fantastic uh, professional experience. And presenting today is a great professional experience for me. Um, I think when bad things happen, like COVID, when we have to go through a lot of changes, we kind of create meaning for why these happen. And those are some of the positive things that I've 
brought out of this year. So that that's my piece. <laughs> Thank you, Aidan, for that very frank and honest sharing about some of the learnings and opportunities. And it's been a great joy to have you on our on our team and doing the, that back-end admin support work for us this year as well. So we hope to have that continue also. So thanks, Aidan, for those sharings. I'd like to um, welcome Emily now. Good morning, everyone. And thank you for having me, Jackie. So I'm very excited to share some of my story around what happened in 2020 because it was um, a bit crazy, really. Uh, starting with a bit of background to set um, the story. So after working uh, in suicide prevention and with addictions and homelessness um, for a while, I took on a role as a child and family counselor three years ago in the community services sector. As I started working more and more with children, I quickly realized that I would have to develop new skills if I was to connect with children. And I had to add more strategies on top of my more traditional talk therapy, which is when I attended my first few workshops with Jackie, which were uh, art and play therapy and symbol and centrays. And from there, my interest for play therapy just kept growing. So last year, I decided to do the postgrad certificate in art and play therapy. And by the end of December last year, when I finished the course, I felt ready and excited to start my own private practice and set up my own playroom. So it took me approximately two months to find the right space, do the formalities, gather all the resources that I needed. And by the end of February, my business was finally advertised online and I was with excitement waiting for my first client inquiry. But instead of a phone call or even an email, it's COVID-19 that came along and with it, the lockdown. So as you can imagine, uh, the project of private practice went on hold for a while. Uh, in my work in the community services sector, we were quickly transitioned onto working online. At that point, in addition to the fear around what was happening globally, in my work with children, all I could see was limitations. By that, I mean that if play was the natural language of children, at that point, I really could not see how children could express themselves without their words, the toys. Um, so working online felt extremely daunting because I had absolutely no training or no experience in that field. And I was really unsure about how to engage children online. I felt so defeated that at that point, I even considered packing up my playroom that I had spent so much time setting up and yeah, was so excited about. So I even considered, yeah, ending back that space too. But instead of doing all that, I just gave myself time and I'm glad that I did because that's when the learning happened. So to start with, I had to reassess uh, the importance of self-care because despite the fear, the disappointment of seeing um, my dream of practice, uh, private practice going up in smoke. The service delivery still had to go on for the children that I was now seeing online. So I had to make sure that I was in the right state of mind. And for me, what worked was surfing. So I quickly became one of those crazy people who would go out in the middle of winter, even when there was no waves, just to make sure that I kept looking after myself. Um, some more learning was in terms of practice. I learned how to prepare parents differently. I became a bit of an IT consultant sometimes. Um, I also had to prepare parents differently in terms of ensuring that they would provide the children with a private space and that the child could have access as well to other resources such as drawing material or, or anything that might be practical for us to use during the sessions. Uh, thankfully, earlier on, Jackie directed me to a Facebook, Facebook group, sorry, 
called Teleplay Therapy Resources and Support, which is full of wonderful ideas on how to work online. And when I first uh, visited that group, I felt a bit like Alice who fell down the rabbit hole and realized that there was all those things happening and that were happening far before COVID that I had absolutely no idea about. So I discovered virtual playroom, sentry applications, and other online game and platforms that can be used therapeutically online. It was great. So I integrated that to my practice slowly. And finally, and quite importantly, actually, I have learned that most children have tons of resources at home that they can bring and use during the sessions, such as Legos, soft toys, Play-Doh, lots of things. So as Jackie was saying at the beginning, I live quite rurally. So after three months without COVID cases in my area, I decided to start seeing children face to face in my private practice. And that came with a whole lot of new learning too. So I had to learn how to be COVID safe. Uh, as most of us have, I'm sure. Uh, I had to create a consent form to inform parents of our mutual obligation, just to make sure that everyone was kept safe. Um, I had to learn how to take temperatures and use um, hand sanitizer in abundance, just to make sure that everything stayed safe. In the actual playroom itself, I had to ensure that everything that was left was things that were easily washable between sessions. So I used mostly plastic toys and removed all the soft surfaces. And for things that weren't easily washable, I found a way around that by creating a box per child where I would put drawing material or play dos and all those things that I just couldn't wash between sessions. And on top of that, I just made sure that I stayed in touch with the primary health network just to make sure that I would be informed if there was any changes in terms of cases in, in the region. So looking back at this crazy year, um, it's been really, really hard. But as Aiden was saying, it has also created some opportunities. Um, for me, it's been a massive opportunity to build resilience. Uh, by pushing me out of my comfort zone, uh, COVID has also forced me to develop uh, skills that I would probably not have developed otherwise, or at least not that quickly. Uh, now I have to say that I do feel more confident and flexible in my work. I feel like I can go on with, I can go with the flow more easily. And without COVID, I wouldn't be talking to you today. I know that preparing for this talk um, has been a real opportunity to reflect on what a crazy ride 2020 has been. And very interestingly, this reflection has somehow made my level of optimism raise because despite all the uncertainties that we're all experiencing out there, now I do know with certainty that whatever happens in terms of the pandemic, um, the work that many of us do with children will continue. And it might take different shapes and forms, but whatever happens, it will be great work anyway. So that's it for me. Thank you. And back to you, Jackie. Thank you so much, Emily, for that very honest, again, account of how you've grown resilience and opportunities this year for yourself. Well done. Really lovely to hear. Kim, we'd love to hear your take on 2020 now as well. Welcome. Thanks, Jackie. Would you be able to make me a co-host, please? I'm trying something a bit new, so it might take about 20 seconds for me to get it together. But uh, that's what the whole year's been about, trying something new. So I thought, why not even try something on top of it? <laughs> Here we go. Sorry, I can only see a PowerPoint, not a video. Can you see it moving, Aiden? Yeah, I can see it going through the different slides. Yeah, that's what I can see.
really my special thank you to Jackie because um, I think so much has been on her shoulders and I feel she's helped me reinvent myself. She's been so supportive and acknowledging. And really, I think there are so many dozens of people that have benefited through her being on the platform and uh, gathering together such a, a broad professional group of people. And I just want to thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Kim. That's a beautiful presentation. I know we're both a bit teary. So, beautiful. and well done on your book. It's coming out next February and we're going to do that, give that a really big plug. It's really wonderful. Certainly wasn't expecting this presentation to be about me. So I'm a bit embarrassed, but thank you, Kim, for all of the great things that you've done and stepped up in terms of your training with us this year. Well done. And without further ado, I'd love to welcome you, Robert, to hear. Can you, can you all hear me? Okay, <laughs> um, well, I'm so excited to be with you all. Um, and thank you, Jackie, uh, for inviting me. Um, so what a, what a great presentation, Kim. I'm, I'm a strong visual learner, so I'm, I'm all over that. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna use that idea of playing the YouTube music behind a slide. I'm gonna do that sometime now. So I'm gonna steal that idea from you. Um, so I was thinking about this question and I guess two things popped into my head. Um, one was just very pragmatic and the other was more philosophical. Uh, the pragmatic one being, uh, kind of what, um, Emily and Kim were both mentioning, uh, and that is just the increase in my tech savviness. Uh, more than I ever thought I would be in my life, <laughs> crammed into about six months. Um, so crazy. Uh, but there were some really good things about that. Uh, you know, Jackie mentioned that, you know, I do the alt play therapy trainings and uh, those have been so well received and so popular uh, around the world, but it's hard to get around the world. Uh, that's not so easy uh, to do in person. And uh, we have never offered the all play training via any kind of webinar form. And it's always been in person. And so uh, this year uh, we had uh, a training planned in the UK and it got canceled. It was right at the beginning of COVID um because of COVID issues we rescheduled it you know thinking you yeah, know well, this is going to last a few months right and then we'll be back to normal uh and it got canceled again we're like okay we got to do something here because these poor people uh have signed up for this canceled twice who knows when we would really have it in person um so we decided let's try this webinar uh this two-day all play certification webinars. It's a lot of hours to set in front of, you know, a video, but it went great. It was actually very, very good. Uh, so good that I was like, why didn't we even think about this before? This makes so much sense, especially for uh, international folks and professionals uh, to have such an easier access uh, to the training. Uh, and so that was a big, big thing I learned and a very good thing because we will continue to do that even after COVID is gone to be able to uh, get more people these trainings. And it was nice to get that feedback, you know, even through some smaller webinars that we did this year out of the All Play Clinic. Uh, there were people who were joining in from all around, all around the world, as I'm sure you've had, Jackie. And, you know, they're messaging me I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't have got been able to do this training if it wasn't in this format, you know, that that would not be possible for me to come to the US and do this in person. And so that really spoke to me. I mean, that's a really neat thing. And I think the fact that we're all more comfortable with that now and uh, we're willing to offer them, we're willing to attend them. And we see that this has created such a nice benefit for for all of us around the world, especially when we unite in things like play therapy. Uh, that's so much fun actually to have people 
in different places around the world connecting and talking about play therapy and their play therapy experiences. So that was a real practical thing that came in for me this year that um, has really been great that I appreciated. Philosophically, um, all my in-person trainings got canceled. <laughs> so it gave me a lot of time at home um, and really had me thinking about uh, just kind of getting back on track with my own mindfulness agenda uh, and really trying to get back focused on that and keeping that active in my life instead of when things get busy, my mindfulness focus goes away. Uh, and so I really felt like I've gotten back in touch with that this year, hopefully in a way that will last and uh, will carry on when things maybe start to get a little more hectic again. But it had me reflecting actually on when I was with you guys. Uh, I was with Jackie a couple years ago in Sydney, Australia. And I'm not just saying this because I'm talking to you guys. I promise I do not say this all the time. That was one of my favorite uh, travel trips to do that training. Every single thing about it just went really well and really easy. I loved every meal I ate. Jackie was a great host. I loved the training participants. I mean, everything just was so nice for me. And I remember thinking, I don't know why this came into my head this year, but especially with this question that Jackie posed. I remember being in, in my hotel and it was like, I think my last night there and I was tired. And I remember thinking, should I go out and walk around, just walk around the city a little bit? No, I'm kind of tired. And this year reminded me like, go walk around the city. You know, you don't know when you're going to be back. Wherever you're at right now, you know, make the most of it, be mindful of it. Uh, don't think that, you know, you're gonna have another opportunity because we don't know what's gonna happen. This year has shown us that, right? So take advantage of where you're at when you're there and just do that extra thing because it's important that we just sort of stay in that mindset all the time. Uh, I can apply that to so many things this year. Uh, I will never, ever again um, feel bad about playing with Legos for the sixth time in a day since nobody has played with my Legos for like six months. <laughs> so I will appreciate, you know, these moments and these things much more after having gone through this year and, and, and I'm, like you guys, I'm sure we're, we're still very much in it. I mean, I'm, I don't, we don't have an end in sight. So this could carry on, you know, for a while into 2021 uh, as well. So a uh, couple of things, a little bit different. I mean, the things for me with clients actually are kind of boring because I was doing a lot of telehealth before COVID-19, just certain situations with a lot of the differently able clients I work with where they, they couldn't come into the office anyway. Uh, so that wasn't a huge shift for me. Uh, but I think these other elements really impacted me. Uh, this year. And certainly I feel like I'm trying to still learn from it. You know, I do think there's always something to learn from the things we go through in life, even the hard things. Uh, and I feel like I'm getting some of those lessons and there's probably more, you know, and that's good. Uh, just trying to stay open to that. So I don't know if I did my 10 minutes, but uh, I, that's, that's where I'm at. And so I'll just kind of wrap it up with that. Thank you, Robert, for sharing both the practical and the philosophical reflections on this year for yourself. It's really lovely to have you and we really appreciate you coming in on this panel with us as well. So thank um, if I could get you to all join me in virtually thanking our um, panellists. They're all sharing very different takes on their opportunities, their reflections on the year and their learnings. I wonder if anyone has any questions for either Aidan Emily, Kim, or Robert. If you do have a question and you'd like to type it in the chat box, I'm happy to read those out and we can either direct it to someone in particular or have it as a general question. So there's a couple of minutes now for some questions before we go into breakout rooms and give you a bit more of an opportunity to reflect maybe in smaller groups of two or three, maybe with one of the panelists, if you're lucky. 
um, on what what your take is on what they've shared, but also if there's anything you'd like to share about your year, feel free to um, do that in that opportunity too. So we'll have those breakout rooms for about five or 10 minutes, but does anyone have any questions that they would like to ask any of our panelists before we go into that? You can either um, put it in the okay, chat or just wave your hand. Um, yes. Um, it's for Emily. Uh, I just wondered, Emily, when you were doing sessions with children online, um, did you have to, or did you ask the parents to provide certain resources? Like, did you send them a list of something if you had something planned to do with a child or how did you figure that part of it out? I usually just started with asking them getting some drawing material. So just being mindful as well to keep a low cost on things. So first session, we would usually use the drawing material and then quite often I found that kids had lots of stuff at home that we could yeah. use like soft toys for puppets or Legos to build things. Yeah, there is resources. Great, thanks. Thanks, Emily. And thanks for that question, Ella, too. Does anyone else have any questions? We've got a relatively small group. So if you do either put it in the chat or even just feel free to wave your hand, I'm happy to ask you to unmute and um, there's a question in the chat for Emily. Yeah, uh, what Facebook, uh, this is from Zali. What Facebook page did you join where you found some good websites and that to have virtual playrooms, et cetera, would you be willing to share with us some of your go-tos? Um, the Facebook group itself is Tele Play Therapy Resources and Support. And there, there is lots of videos on how to build uh, virtual play therapy rooms. Um, there's tons of websites. I wouldn't even know where to start. I would highly recommend that website or that group on Facebook. Yeah. Thanks for that question. And I think Emily has actually typed that into the chat box. So if you want to go into the chat and have a look, you can download that and use that. Thanks for that question as well. Anything else you'd like to ask? any of the panellists. Back from those breakout rooms. Nice to have you back again. Uh, Miriam, is there anything you'd like to share about what you discussed in your, in your little group there? I'll just get you to unmute first though. We can't hear you just yet. You might just have to, you, Miriam, do you know how to unmute? We can't hear you yet. That's okay. it. Yeah, yeah, so it was just me and the other lady, Rio. So um, I work as a school counsellor with adolescents and um, I'm really glad to be back at school after, you know, eight months, whatever it was, seven months. It was tough. But what we're really surprised with is the number of students who are now asking for help themselves and especially male students, you know, 14, 15 year old who are saying, I need to talk to someone. So I feel that we're preparing them for, you know, later on in life, they'll know what steps to take to prevent them falling into that big black hole. So that is the positive that I'm taking away. Lovely. Thank you for sharing that, Miriam, about the positives that have come out of your role as a school counsellor. There's a silver lining and we we'll look for it, but yeah. There is indeed always a silver lining if we look for it. Thank you. Anyone else want to share anything that they discussed in their group just now. Uh, Marcus. Um, I guess we discussed uh, the challenges for the neural diverse cohort uh, in, in schools and in other um, delivery uh, and um, specifically uh, about the interrupted learning, uh, maybe at school, having to suddenly go online, be at school, lots of that routine change uh, and those sorts of challenges and I think also uh, a little bit uh, positively is is how quickly uh, everybody and everything was able to move to online and and possible new great developments that have been implemented through that having to be shoved through that uh, tight hole in a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lovely. Thank you for reflecting on that, Marcus. Um, I know you would have had some very rich conversations in your group. Unfortunately, we won't have time for too much more reflection, but if there is anything that you got out of that that you would like to share with the bigger group, 
please feel free to use the chat and put that in there and, um, and share some of your insights and learnings and opportunities with others if you'd like to do that. So a couple of other things to do. I'd like to, um, I'd like to gift you some prizes before we finish up today. So we've just had this lovely opportunity to connect in with a couple of other people, maybe one person, maybe two people, and share some of our reflections. I wanted you to know about uh, some other, we've got two other free webinars already on the website if you wanted to join us for those. Making Neil Times Marvellous is particularly good for those working with uh, younger children or people who are finding feeding difficult for um, lots of neurodevelopment reasons or sensory issues or just having fussy eaters. So for parents who are struggling with that, but also for health professionals, we've got a nutritionist and a music therapist who have teamed up to help children uh, eating. And uh, they've got that presentation in January and there's another one in February already. So do feel free to register for that if you're interested in coming along and the recordings of those will also be available a couple of weeks after. Thank you all for being here with us today. We're going to wind up now um, and we'll send out those certificates for you uh, in a couple of weeks, hopefully just before Christmas. Thank you so much for being part of our learning community this year online. Thank you to all of our presenters today. It's really lovely to have your frank and considered reflections on the year that has really, I think, encouraged us to think about what our learnings, what our opportunities, and what our uh, take-homes are for the year that can make all our practices professional and personal as best as they can be. So thanks for being here and look forward to connecting with you in lots of positive ways moving into the future too. All the best. Bye now. <laughs>